I've just stepped out of the new Mitsubishi Outlander launch press conference. You'll see a blip in Outlander marketing in coming days. And if you're thinking of buying one, here's what you need to know. This vehicle is a facelift of the old model. Same old Outlander minus some of the nagging criticisms that dogged the old one. Bit noisy, bit harsh, bit cheap and nasty inside, and a bit revvy on the CVT front. So they tweaked the issues that could be cost effectively tweaked. And it's got a new face. Like when Lexus and the mighty Morphin Power Rangers collide. Ladies and gentlemen, up the pointy end, I give you Dynamic Shield. <laughs> this is not a joke. At least, it's not meant to be. Dynamic Shield, it's like the Marvel superhero who never really got out of the blocks. It's like, nah mate, thanks for the suggestion, but we're still gonna go with Captain America. Dynamic Shield. It's better than Mazda's Soul of Motion or Hyundai's Fluidic Sculpture. I wonder how you say Face of Power Ranger in Japanese or Mouth of Guppy. Uh, car companies, they just get so completely wrapped up in this meaningless marketing crap. Anyway, that's the new look. You'll be seeing a lot more of the new Mighty Morphin Mitsubishi's Dynamic Shield whatever as new models hit the deck. It's always unfortunate in my view when the brand's all new look lands on a facelift because it's never gonna be the finest hour for that design. Prices are largely unchanged, either within $750 more or 400 bucks less than the predecessor, or no change at all on some models. The cheapest models have gone up and the dearest models have come down, perversely. So basically, you get a few tweaks, different hair and makeup, but nothing of monumental import. Aside from the new snout, the biggest change is probably the new CVT control system. It's called CVT-8. I wonder how they thought that name up and how many iterations of control systems preceded it. Mitsubishi says CVT-8 delivers 26% more torque transmission than the predecessor. And all I can say there is the old one must have been hemorrhaging torque faster than the numerous victims across all the iterations of Bram Stoker's Dracula. It's an improvement, sure, but the old one must have been crap, and they never said that at its launch. Sharper throttle response and a resulting more intuitive interplay between throttle, revs, and road speed make the CVT feel less reprehensible, allegedly. And it also delivers a very slight boost in fuel efficiency according to official standardized tests. They've pumped up the acoustic insulation and tweaked the glass to cut noise vibration and harshness. And there's the odd suspension upgrade as well. Bigger rear dampers, that kind of thing. Warranty remains five years, but the distance attached to that warranty has come back to 100,000 kilometres. It was 130,000. Mitsubishi says that's to align warranties globally within the company, but it won't roll off the tongue nearly as well as Hyundai Kia's unlimited distance warranty with five and seven years respectively. And bear in mind, both big South Korean brands are especially strong in five and seven seat SUVs. All models get new 18 inch alloys, a big upgrade for the base model there. LED daytime running lamps and LED combination rear lamps are standard across the new range. And there's a new, very nice steering wheel as well. And more comfy seats. There are three models, LS, XLS and Exceed in ascending order of automotive sex appeal, or at least price and complexity. When it comes to the new stuff, the base model LS gets privacy glass and repeater lamps in the wing mirrors. Jumping up to the mid-spec XLS gets you digital audio, electric folded and heated wing mirrors, for those urban jungles where most outlanders will do business, and the top spec Exceed, where was the idea for that name originally? Talk about framing the debate. It effectively consigns all of the lesser models to the domain of underachievement. Anyway, Exceed gets LED headlamps and glossy black interior garnish. There are three engines, 
2 litre and 2.4 litre petrol and a 2.2 diesel. The diesel comes with a conventional six speed auto and all wheel drive only. It works like this, the two litre engine is two wheel drive only and you can only get it in XL and XLS. 2.4 litre petrol is available with all wheel drive only right across the range. If you want seven seats, that's XLS or Exceed, petrol or diesel. There's only one manual, a throwback, and I suspect it's just there to be a price leader. It's a five speed. Remember when cars still had those? And you can have it in any model you want as long as you only want the two litre front wheel drive LS manual. If that's your dream, it kicks off the range and it can be all yours for 28 and a half grand plus on road costs. The hot tip there, buy a car instead. If you've got about 40 grand to spend, a 2.4 litre Outlander XLS all wheel drive is looking pretty good. If I was spending my money on an Outlander, that would probably be the one I'd buy. Outlander is effectively one rung down from the pick of the heavy hitting SUV seven seaters, Hyundai Santa Fe, Kia Sorento and Toyota Kluga. It's not as potent, nor is it as premium, but it does represent a significant saving in cash. That Hyundai Kia 2.2 diesel in Sorento and Santa Fe is a cracker, but Mitsubishi's 2.2 diesel in XLS and Exceed just can't match. And 3.5 litre V6s like the Kluger and Sorento do tend to murder 2.4 litre Mitsubishi 4s. I'd be putting the smart money on the Goliath option there. In the five seat SUV set, the Mazda CX-5 outpoints the Mitsubishi across all three engines slightly. The CX-5 also features a conventional six speed auto and it's a compelling choice following its recent facelift. So have a good look at the CX-5 as well if you need a five seat SUV. If you're looking at an Outlander, by definition, you're also in the market for a Nissan X-Trail. The petrol engines are line ball between those two but the Outlander's 2.2 diesel absolutely eclipses Nissan's 1.6 diesel. And of course, Nissan's range is so spaced out on seven seat availability, the mind boggles. Mitsubishi's by comparison is remarkably rational. Both of these vehicles offer seating in the third row for occasional use only, or continuous use for people you absolutely detest. Finally, if you don't need seven seats, but you want a wagon for the family, why not just buy a car? I'm not being flippant. People don't ask themselves why they're actually buying an SUV, and it costs heaps. You can get a Mazda 6 Touring station wagon for the same approximate price as an XLS 2.4 Outlander. And I know SUVs are the haute couture of the family motoring set currently, but you could mount a compelling argument that the wagon would suit many families better and be a better car because, <laughs> knock me down with a feather, it's actually a car. A lot of people presume they want an SUV without having a real hard look at whether a car would be better. And because buying a new car does kind of suck, if you're in the market, send me a message or click on the links in this video. It's pretty easy to save thousands off the manufacturer's drive away price on any new car. Ask me how. Don't believe that crap car dealers always spin about there being no profit in new cars anymore. Look around at all the glass and the chrome at the dealership's prime real estate. Join the dots. Don't forget to like this video either, very important and subscribe for regular updates. You can visit me online at autoexpert.com.au. I'm John Cadogan, thanks for watching.